Welcome to Talk To Him, a show where we discuss self-help strategies, money, music, fashion, education, relationships, food, love, and how it all links to financial success. Be sure to hit that like button, also that follow button as well, and share. Share with your friends, folks. It costs you nothing to share. I'm your host for this show. My name is James Levesque. Talk to him. Come vibe with me. Come vibe with me. So, ladies and gents, as you guys can see, we had to switch it up a little bit in the studio. We got big money in here. All right? We got big money players in here. Folks, this guest, uh, special guest in the studio with us today, he is a successful entrepreneur, an investor, right? Sexy island man from Jamaica, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got D Mark Davis. What's D Mark, going on, brother. Thank, thank you, for you man. Me, thank man. you for pulling up, brother. I appreciate it, man. Yo, so ab- absolutely, man. Yo, let me explain to you how, how, I, how I got hip to D Mark. I got hip to you, right? Yeah. So, this is the power of the internet, right? So, scrolling through Facebook. Usually, I don't scroll like that, I, I yeah. usually post, yep. you know? Scrolling through Facebook. And then I see this quote, right? Mm-hmm. It says, late night thoughts, wealth principles. In this quote, it yeah. says, late night thoughts. It says, there was, one, there, was, there was one quote that just resonated with me. And it says, stop being scared and start taking action, right? And at that point, you know, we in business, you know, you're going through your ups and downs right. in business, right? And sometimes you might be a little bit hesitant to make that phone right, right. call, a little bit hesitant to make that post, a little bit hesitant. And I seen that quote. It was almost like God was telling me, <laughs> bro, stop being scared and start taking action, yep. right? What inspired, what, what's the inspiration behind Late Night Thoughts and Wealth Principles, bro? So with Late Night Thoughts, it's just in the night when it's extremely quiet in my house, my mind just always goes 100, right? Mm-hmm. And... I always feel like whatever inspiration I have, somebody else can benefit from it. Likewise, I can benefit from someone else's mm-hmm. inspiration. So I'm just always inspired each and every day by my own self and whatever I'm doing, as well as successful people and just positive people. And I'm like, you know what? I need to just share this. Yeah. I need to present me to the world, who I am, and be transparent. These are my thoughts. Yeah. And hopefully, if nobody likes them, then at least I'm still putting them out there, you know? And I always get feedback from people saying, man, you know, I don't re- usually reach out to you, but I like what you're doing. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, all right, that's cool. At least you're paying attention. Yeah. Then a lot of people start reaching out to me like, bro, those late night thoughts are really bringing me through my days. And I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. It's reaching people. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the purpose was just to share what's on my mind mm. until I see that my results are actually helping people getting results in their own lives just yeah. through my thoughts. Yeah. You know, because my thoughts create my reality. Right. So if I can, like, just instill in you that, hey, man, listen, your thoughts create. Just think about it, and it will become your reality. Whatever you have on the inside will have to come on the outside Yeah. if you want it to. I like that, yeah. bro. I like that. Yo, honestly, man, you got to keep doing those. Well, <laughs> principles, it. man, late night thoughts, because, you know, as entrepreneurs and just getting to it, and, you know, we... We, here's the thing, right? A lot of people, a lot of people talk about the, the success, right. right? But they don't really talk about the failures, you know, the failures, because I've experienced failure in my, in my life mm-hmm. and, you know, in my journey and entrepreneurship, working, mm-hmm. all these things, just creating business and, and, and all together, right? Like, how do, how do you, let's say, how do you, overcome those failures, bro? Right. A great question. So I always look at it this way. If, if there's no test, then there's no testimony, mm. right? If you've never been knocked out, you can't tell me how a punch feels. Well. You know, if, you, if you've never done it, then how can you really tell from the point of view that I've experienced something, you know? So with failures, failures have always been my fuel, you know? It's like success, then failure. Success, then failure. It's like the stepping stone to wherever you want to go. Yeah. And I've always used failures as just like the fire to push me. Because mm. I can't fail. To me, honestly, failure isn't, re- isn't even real. That's you true. Know? It's just a word, failure. Yeah. To me, it's just progress. 
Progress. Because I, if you change the way you look at things, everything, everything changes, right? So if I look at, all right, I want to become a billionaire, then the steps to becoming a billionaire are going to see my failure. They're going to see my challenges. But you know that the ultimate goal for you to get there it's a billion, right? Mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's this ultimate goal that in order for you to reach there, yeah. you can't just go from point A to point B. Absolutely. There's a direction, there's right? Steps. There's, there's steps. There's yeah. levels. Like you're counting. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, sir. So I just look at it as failure one, failure two, failure three, but I'm still going up. That's true. I'm still climbing the ladder. That's true. Right? And I know that that's what's going to take me to where I need to be. Yeah. Just yeah. Change, change the way you look at it. That's true, that's bro. That's just it. That's true. Um... So let's go back a little bit, yeah. bro, because, you know, I, I know you're from Jamaica, yeah. right? How was life growing in Jamaica? Life in Jamaica was amazing. It's like, I wouldn't change it for the world, yeah. you know? We grew up in humble beginnings. I grew up with my grandfather, my um, grandmother, and my father. We all grew up in, like, one bedroom, right? Mm. So everything in Jamaica was just, like, amazing. I didn't know anything different, mm -hmm. you know? We had this tight-knit I had a great community. I've seen a lot of violence. I've seen the bad side of the spectrum. But because that was my environment, I didn't look at it as, as anything it, right. abnormal. Right, it was right. the norm. Yeah. You know? Yo, so I asked you that because I'm also an immigrant as well, too. Yeah. Migrated out here when I was like six years old from Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Yeah. Right? And I remember when I first came to the States, I was your little boy. You yeah. know what I mean? And... Like, that experience for me was kind of like, wow. Like, I remember the first time I saw snow. Yep. I was like, yo, what is this I white remember stuff, that too. I remember what is this white stuff dropping in the air, man? Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, when did you come to the States? So, so funny story, right? My mom lived in the States mm. ever since I was a, a young um, child. And we used to always communicate back and forth. But I've never really remembered seeing my mom when I was smaller, mm. right? And I came to visit her when I was around 15 years old. That's the first time I remember seeing my mom again. Wow. Right? And ever since then, I was like, you know what? I, I've always wanted to have a relationship with my mom, so I kept on coming here on vacation. So my first time was around when I was 15 years old, yeah, yeah. in the United States. Wow, wow, wow. So when did, like, you, you so you was going back and forth from Yeah, Jamaica. I was still in school. Okay. Like, I was still with my parents, with my father and grandparents. Yeah. So I couldn't move here up until I completed school. My wow. father was like, you have to finish school before anything, you know. Mm, so I, I like used, just used to come here on vacation to visit my mom, my brothers, and stuff like that. Yeah. So let me ask you this, bro, right? Like, like what 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 industry are you in? Like, cause there's a few industries <laughs> like that you in, bro. Like, right. and this is when I knew I was like, yo, this brother's serious, right. man. You know what I'm saying? Like, what what industry are you in? Like, I'm in the success industry. Ah, <laughs> talk to. <him. laughs> I'm in the so, success industry. Yeah. So, no, I like that. Yeah, man. So I started off. So a lot of people don't know this. I went to college. Right, and I studied electrical engineering. So I have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering. Mm. But I've never used my degree a day in my life, right? Yeah. I chose entrepreneurship, right? So when I moved here, I dabbled in a whole bunch of stuff from network marketing, um, construction, right? Um, I started off doing real estate. Yes. As a real estate agent, that was my first serious career choice, okay. right? Where I really started to experience like, success to mm. me. I made five hundred dollars one time, and I thought that I was Bill Gates, right? Because yes, uh, yeah. we're coming from humble beginnings, yeah, like, yeah, you know, course. I wasn't like destitute, but we didn't see those type of money, nah. you know. And when I come, when I came here, and I saw that I can do one transaction, and five hundred dollars to me, I can buy all the sneakers that I want, I can eat whatever I want, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's just meaningful yeah. having access to creating finances. Yeah. And then from there, it was real estate as an agent. Then as an investor purchasing my own properties, stuff oh. like that. And then um, I moved on to the trucking industry. Trucking? Yes. Wow. I owned my own trucking company, the tractor trailers, 18 yeah. wheelers. I went into that because I wanted to diversify. After learning that you can build wealth through real estate, I learned that not to put your eggs into one basket. Absolutely. So that's where diversification came in. And from trucking, I moved on to trading the financial markets from like starting off with stocks, then I went into Forex. Mm -hmm. After that, I've always been working out, right? So whether or not I'm looking at real estate or trucking or whatever, fitness has always been a part of my life. Yeah. And I always want to make sure that I'm living 
with purpose and creating. Yeah. And I know that once I'm living my purpose, my purpose will, will create whatever finances that I want. And that's how I just strictly focus on fitness right yeah. now. You know? Yo, I, I wanted to ask you that too, because if you go to this man's page, yeah. folks, right? <laughs> my man be flexing these muscles, you know what I mean? You're in shape, brother, you look good, bro. It, you know, like what's your what's your workout routine, bro? What so, do you what do you do, man? You know? So honestly, I love lifting heavy. Yeah. Like all my friends that know me, I, I just like it's, it does something to my mindset, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like me coming out here, I'm I'm aiming for the highest level financially. It's the same thing I do with my body. Mm -hmm. But I realized that working out actually creates a solid mindset for business. That's true. So everything is interconnected. Yeah. And I'm like, I can use the same discipline that I apply to my body to business. All right. So that just propels me to go to that highest level in working out each and every day. I always want to go harder. I always want to improve. So I have like a routine for the week, mm. like from Monday to Friday, sometimes even Sunday. I try to take two days off, but right. because I'm so committed to it, but it's like a lifestyle, yeah. I don't want to take no days off for working out, I feel you. you know? But I lift heavy, I do calisthenics, I like working out on the bar. Yeah. Sometimes in the mornings, brother, as soon as I wake up and I do my meditations and I write down my goals and stuff like that, yeah. I have to work out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that itch, you know? Yeah. I have to work out. If I don't work out, I feel like my day is completely off. Dang, bro, you mentioned meditation because yes. I meditate as well yes. too, right? And yo, it's crazy how like, you know, on the on on the internet, yeah. I feel like yo, we're kindred <laughs> souls, bro. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like good people recognize good Absolutely. people. You we know what I'm to saying? The same source, brother. Exactly, brother. You know what I'm saying? So how has meditation helped you, bro? Meditation has really quiet my mind. Yeah. Right? It allows me to just be one and just be on this frequency of just perfection. Yeah. Right? So I feel like meditation and prayer is interconnected for me. Because that's how I communicate with my higher source. Absolutely. Just by having that oneness, right? Yeah. And with meditation, it allows me to see things clearer. Yeah. If my day, I always reflect on my days, right? So for example, if something went wrong throughout my day and I had no control over it, I go into my state of meditation mm. and I reflect and I see that, how could I have done things different or mm. whatever? And I change it. Mm. it. It might sound crazy, but... I go, in the, I go in the past, in my mind, and just change it. Right. I look right. at it as how I wanted it to be. Yeah. Right? And then that just helped me with every other outcome <laughs> in my life. I like that. You know? Yeah. So meditation for me is like a superpower. Yeah. Where I access whatever outcome I want. Because we all have the power. You can see things how you want it to see. Yeah. How you want it to be. And it will work out that way. All right. Let me ask you this, right? Yeah. When you was on your journey, like when you hit that that number, right? Yeah. That you wanted to hit. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, was how was you feeling, bro? How was you feeling? Like, cause it's a feeling, like, bro. Like even if it's not there yet, yeah. you know, like, yo, I know something big's about to happen. Let me let me, let me tell you something, bro. Ever since I was in Jamaica as a child, even though I was in an environment that could not tell you that there's no proof that you were successful. Mm. I always felt successful. Yeah. Even when I was sleeping in the same room with my father and on that bed with the mattresses all springy where I have rats, roaches, everything. Like, we're in the bedroom and you can see outside through that boarded house, right? I always felt successful. Yeah. You know? So even when I touch certain numbers over here, it's like I've already experienced it. Right. Remember, right. I create what I want. Right. So I don't just come here and be like, yo, wow, I made... X amount of money, X hundred thousand or a million or whatever the case is. I've always, I've already experienced that ever since I was a child. Yeah. Because it's, it's like divinely connected, bro. I look at God as, that's my father, right? God right. created me and he's perfect. Yeah. And if God is wealth, he's the wealthiest being created, right? Because right. he creates wealth. Absolutely. And if I'm an offspring of that and I'm created in, in that image, yeah. then what does that make me? I'm wealthy. I like I that. don't need you to tell me. I don't need financial anything on paper to tell me who I am. Yeah. I know who I am. I create those. The money didn't create me. I create whatever money I make. Yo, you talk about your dad, bro, yeah. right? Like, how, how was your, your father as, as a man, you know what man, I mean? listen, my father was my first superhero. Yeah. Before Batman, Superman, all that stuff, it was my father. Yeah. Nobody could tell me anything about my father, yeah. right? And my father was my first best friend, you know? I didn't grow up with my mother. It was my grandparents and my father. So my father couldn't do wrong in my eyes. Yeah. So whether or not he was a wealthy man financially, 
he was everything to me. Right. You know, and the discipline that he instilled in me, yeah. it applies to this day with everything else that I do. Mm. You know, my father made sure that whatever he could provide was accessible yeah. every day for me. I, if, I tell, if I told you that I went to bed hungry one day, I would be lying to you. Yeah. My father always provided for me, for other people, and for himself. He's still alive? He's still alive. He's in um, London right now. Wow, chill. Yeah. How old is he? Shout you? out to my father. Yeah. He's around 56. 56. Yeah. Oh, your father's young, yeah, bro. Yeah, man. Big up to my father, man. He just had two younger kids, too. What? <laughs> yeah, you're still alive. Your dad's yeah, still, still, still got it. That's what's up, bro. That is what's yeah, up, man. man. I like that. Shout you know, out to my father, man. So Big up, daddy. That. Big up. <laughs> Yo, because here's the thing, right? And I like that. That's why me and you, because I grew up with my dad yeah. as well, too. My mom passed away. Yeah. She transitioned when I was younger, right? And uh, I seen like my dad's work ethic, yeah. you know what I mean? And just the way, you know, he drove cabs, you yep. know what I mean, for a living. But he did that every single day mm -hmm. in the way that he got up, he dressed himself, yep. took pride in his yep. work, you know? And I feel like for me, like that's why I'm trying to go so hard right. now. Because I'm like, yo, I got to make sure like take care of this yep. man, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. he took good care of me. He gave me, he gave me like discipline, yep. you know what I mean? He taught me right and wrong, mm -hmm. you know, because you don't hear that as mm -hmm. much, bro. Because most of the time people, you know, they, most young men, they grow growing up with their moms, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And they don't talk about their dads. They right. don't big up their dads yeah, like that. You gotta, you, know? you gotta give credit where credit's due. Absolutely, my brother, absolutely. All right, built by determination. Yes, sir. Right? What is that all about? So like, like everything that I laid out, took determination right yeah from me coming here just becoming successful in the new country it's just determination bro we all use determination to elevate ourselves mm -hmm. and I felt like everything that I've built success wise mentally was just by determination I felt like that was the perfect uh, representation of me mm -hmm. and what I stand for you know so is that like a, is that like your health fitness that it's, it's, it's my lifestyle your lifestyle so right now built by determination we have it as a clothing brand and my fitness app. Okay. So Built by Determination represents like everything fitness, finances, stuff so like that. So people can go on there. Yeah, you can definitely go on the app store and search Built by Determination, download it, the Play Store, Built by Determination as well. And we have builtbydetermination.com. Wow. Wow, I like that. Yes, sir. Um, we got some trivia for you. Talk to me. We got some <laughs> trivia for you. You know, I got some trivia. All right, here we go. All right, let's see what my man D Mark. Okay. Uh, I got to give you some, some, some. All right. Can't be cheating, man. Can't be <laughs> cheating. All right. I'm going to look at the camera. <laughs> Name three colleges in Boston with Boston in the title. Um, University of Boston. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> Boston, no, Boston, University. Boston, University. Boston University. You got that, Boston University. Um, what else, man? This is a tough one. <laughs> I know Boston University. Yep. What else? BC. Honestly, Boston College. Boston College. Yeah. And then of course, right on the water. Man, you got me with these questions. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm like, yo, universities in Boston. UMass. UMass. UMass University Boston. Okay, UMass there you Boston. Go. There you go. UMass Boston. I'm sorry, colleges, man. I'll make it up. Built by determination. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I read somewhere because I was doing my due diligence, yeah. right, before. And it says um, six years in this country and you became, became a millionaire, yeah. right? What were some of the actions that, that you were doing to help you reach that success? One, it was just the mindset. Yeah. You have to know who you are before anything else can confirm that yeah. you are something. So it was my mindset. I've always felt like I was whatever I wanted to be. Yeah. So that was the first step. And then of course, we have to take action in creating it, right? So most of my wealth came from real estate. Mm. And those are certain principles that I follow in real estate in order to achieve the wealth. And with me having a great mentor, shout out to Alex E. Edwards. That's what my, that was my first mentor. Shout out to That's Alex. Yeah, I know shout Alex out to is Alex. a good yeah. brother. Yeah, shout good out brother. to Alex. Yeah. Alex has an input in a lot of people's success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I give him his credit as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, just having a great mentor, you know, just helping me and guiding me um, in, in the field of real estate. I like that. And then just believing in yourself, bro. 
just believing that you can achieve everything. There's nothing in this world that you can't achieve. Yeah. You know, belief. How old are you, bro? I'm 34. 34? Yeah. Nah, you're young, bro. Yeah, man. You're young, you're young. <laughs> what's, your, what's your, um, what do you eat, bro? What's your diet, dog? So, my diet's pretty tricky, man, because right now I only eat fish as flesh. Yeah. I'm going on my sixth year. So, some people might say I'm pescatarian. Yeah. I did one full year as a vegan, right? And then from that, I just went into being a pescatarian. Was you still able to bulk up? And like, I was the biggest I've ever been. Without eating no meat? Without eating no meat. Yeah. I didn't lose any strength. I didn't lose anything at all. Yeah. So that's how I know that it's all a mind thing. Wow. Because um, I asked that because, you know, a lot of the time, because I've been thinking about, I, I, I eat, I eat, I eat whatever, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I eat whatever. But one thing I do, though, I do fast. Yeah. You know what I mean? Throughout the day. I mean, not the day, throughout the week. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll pick, like, a day, and it's definitely, like, a Wednesday or a Monday. Yeah. And I'll just fast, you know, fastings, mm -hmm. prayer, meditation. So I'm just drinking water. Okay. You know what I mean? The whole day just kind of give the the, um, the intestines a yeah, break. You I know you. what I'm saying? So I ask that because I've been thinking about, like, man, like, just stopping eating meat. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Whether it's chicken. But I love that fried chicken. Bro. I feel like, honestly, you can eat whatever you want. Because yeah. me just eating fish wasn't because of any medical reason or any um, religious reasons or anything. I just wanted to, decided that I wanted to try it. Yeah. And just to test my discipline. Yeah. And now it became a lifestyle. So I like that. it's not like if tomorrow I feel like I want to eat some jerk chicken, I'm going to eat it. Damn, Nothing's going to stop. You don't eat no me. oxtail? I don't eat no oxtail, no beef, jerk no chicken? pork, no chicken. Oh my no, gosh. That. I love the oxtail. <laughs> me too. But it's just like, it's, it's just a, a, a certain level of commitment, bro. Yeah. It's like to me, if I said I'm going to do this, then that's just what it is. That's what it is. You know? I like that, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I can't stop eating oxtail, bro. <laughs> I mean, I go to I'll cook it. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I'll cook it. Yo, but I when I go to Jamaica Mexico, yeah. Mars, bro, I get the oxtail, I get the Jamaican beef patties yeah. with the cocoa bread. You know, I get all of that, bro. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's good know? food, man. It's like once you have the authentic food, you can't go wrong, you know? Let me ask you this, right? Yeah. As a somebody who's successful, right, yeah. um, in their own rights, what do you do when family starts asking you for money honestly family is like my weakness yeah. <laughs> if you should put it that way yeah. but you have to have boundaries bro I, it's because i grew up the way i i grew up in jamaica yeah where we didn't have much i always want to help people and bless people with whatever yeah. i can yeah. you know so I, I always help my family but it's a certain level where it's like you can't pour from an from an empty vessel that's true so you have to make sure that you're full in order for you to help someone else. You can't keep on taking away from you and then you're not at the level where you need to be because yeah. you won't be able to help. That's you know? true. So make sure that you're you're good where you're at and then you can break bread. Yeah. Don't yeah. try to spread <laughs> spread yourself too thin before you're even where you need to be. That's true. You know? Now, I'm the same way, man. I be feeling like sometimes I do, I just... I have a weakness for my family, yeah. you know what I mean? And they know they can get whatever I, I, I wouldn't even call it weak. It's a love, bro. It's, yeah. it's just the love you have for your family. That's true. You know, family is just big. Yeah. Um, how much, you got You got family in Boston? Like, I have oh, brothers in Boston. I have my um, uncle, uncles, um, cousins, a whole bunch of people. Let me ask you this. What is the hardest challenge you've had to overcome in your life right now? Myself and my mindset. What do you mean? Explain like putting little. limits on my <laughs> my thoughts. Yeah. Like saying that, you know, I don't think I can do this. That's the hardest thing, bro. It's the biggest challenge was me versus me. There's yeah. nothing else in this world that uh, has ever challenged me to an extent where I'm like, oh my God, this I can't do anything. It's always a limiting belief in myself. Telling myself that I can't do something when I know that everything's possible. Those are the only challenges that I really face in life. Nothing physical. All right. So let's say... There's a teenage boy yep. coming from Jamaica right yep. now, right? What, what would you give him? Like, what game would you give him to be like, yo, bro, like, what you just said? You know what I'm saying? Believe in yourself. Know that the world is yours. Because Think there's a reason why I right? asked you that, right? Because, yep. like, I feel like young, and I work with a lot of young folks mm -hmm. today, right? They go through a lot. There's a lot of the things that stimulate in their mind, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And they don't really know, like, like you and I, we had our dads in, mm -hmm. our, in our lives, right? And I feel like a lot of times they don't take to authority well, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Somebody telling them, yo, don't do this. Mm -hmm. Somebody telling them, don't do that. 
even sometimes if the person is themselves. Because mm -hmm. sometimes we know what we have mm -hmm. to do, but applying that discipline, mm -hmm. it's the hardest part, bro. I get you. Let me share something with you. This is something I've never shared on camera. Back to what you asked me about, like, a teenage, let's say a younger me yes. coming to America. Yes, sir, I would, yeah. An advice I would give to them. I remember in Jamaica when I was in high school, around the eighth, eighth grade or something like that, I used to fail class. Like, I used to be bad at math. High school to me was, like, free zone. You yeah. want to have fun, yeah. you know what I mean? And I used to be bad at math, right? <clears throat> and the ninth grade, I said, you know what? I want to I wanna be good at math. Yeah. So I started applying myself. Like I said, mindset. Started applying myself, and I got around a 98 on my math test. I used to get like 43%, 33%, low numbers, right? Yeah. And I rushed home. My father was at work. Rushed home. I was outside washing the dishes because we had an outdoor kitchen. And I called my father's job. Mm. And they transferred me to him. And I got all excited. I was like, Daddy. And he's like, oh, what's going on, boss? He calls me boss. What's going on, boss? And I was like, guess what? He was like, what? I said, I passed my, my math test. I got a 98%. He said, why didn't you get 100? Mm. So my excitement crushed right there. Mm. You know what I mean? And up until probably three years ago, since I did therapy, that was still affecting me, even with my success. Mm. Whenever, let's say I was trading and I wanted to make $10,000. If I made $9,500, I would blow it because it's not 100%. Mm. It's not the $10,000 that I want. So my impressionable mind as a child so it was still being affected as an adult. I like that. So like what you said with the younger me, I would pour into them, mm -hmm. letting them know that, hey, you're perfect. Whatever you're doing, it's great. It's perfection. Yeah. So you don't want to give them a limited belief to fight against. You know what I mean? That's true. Because you don't know what's going on internally. Yeah. So if you're pouring in something into them, you don't know how they're going to receive it. Yeah. And they're going to have to have that internal battle yeah. with themselves. And you might see them on the outside not knowing what's going on in the inside. It might affect them 50 years later. That's true, bro. So for me to break that dynamic, I would tell that younger person, like, you got this. The world is yours. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you do, you're doing, that's your best. You can always improve your best, though. Your best can always be better. Yo, that's the thing about island folks. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yo, we, they all, they're so hard. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. You know, they don't really know the effect that it has on exactly. us. Exactly. But to them, they think that, they think that they're doing you a great deed yeah. because they want the best for you. Yeah. But it's how it's being presented. That's you know true. what I mean? Of course, his intentions were great. Yeah. You want yeah. me to be a, get 100%. Yeah. But if you're going to belittle at 98, which I thought was my best, then that's going to affect me in my relationships when I'm older. That's because true. if my partner makes a mistake, that's not 100. Right. We're going to have issues. Right, right. <laughs> With my children, if right. they do, do something, then that's not 100. We're going to have issues. Yeah. So until I change that, that, that programming in my mind, then nothing would change. Yeah. So I want to break that barrier. I like that. Yeah. How has, um, you mentioned that you went to therapy. How has yeah. therapy helped you? Therapy was a great part in my journey. You know, as men, we shy away from stuff like that. Yeah. And me growing up in Jamaica, I consider myself a tough person. I don't yeah. need therapy. Right. My therapy is fixing it myself, you know? And I reached out to one of my mentors and, you know, he saw that I was the best at whatever I was doing. And he's like, man, you're just sabota you're self sabotaging. Yeah. And I was like, well, I mean, nobody can help me with me because it's self sabotaging. It's only me. And he put me in contact with a therapist. Was it and a male or a female therapist? The therapist was female. Actually, two. Yeah. So it was like, I got a, it was an expensive session, bro. Yeah. It's a male and a, and female. a female. Yeah. It was oh. more, more business coaching yeah. and mindset and stuff like okay, that. Yeah. And, they brought me back to that same incident I told you with my father. Wow. <laughs> you know, it brought me back like how many years ago to see that this was the, the event that's causing these results right now, mm. you know? And that's why I'm, I'm able to speak to you right now and say, hey, I wouldn't do this and I wouldn't do that because it affected me. And I needed someone that was like 100 feet away looking down on me yeah. to be like, no, Demar, this is what, what's happening or this is what's what you should do, stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So therapy really helped. I like that, up. bro. I um, I like that. You know, trivia time for my man Demarc. <laughs> Here now. we go with the trivia, <laughs> man. <laughs> trivia time. All right. Name three black quarterbacks in the NFL. Oh my goodness, bro. <laughs> Cam Newton. Cam Newton. All right, cool. Cam, I got you. <laughs> Give me another um, one. 
Who else? Man, you got me with these sport questions, <laughs> man. I know Cam Newton. Who else do I know? Day in Sierra. You used to play for the Seahawks. Bro, you got to give me the third one. You got to ask me Jamaican <laughs> Russell, Russell, <laughs> Russell, Russell, Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook, I yeah. I got you, bro. Russell Westbrook. And, um... Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, all right, cool. all right, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> you got to get me with these questions. All right, all right. So, what um, what goals are you pursuing right now? Um, it's just always self improvement. Yeah, my goals are always just becoming the best version of myself. You know, whenever I feel like I'm winning at a certain level, I just always know that I can improve. Yeah. not only on finances, brother, but just me as a person. Yeah. Becoming a better friend, a better partner, yeah. a better mentor, you know, a better son, like you know, yeah. stuff like that. So it's just always self-improving and just sharing what I, what I know, helping someone to be the better version of themselves or the best version of themselves. Yo, you ever thought about being a motivational speaker, bro? bro I feel like a lot of people <laughs> say that to me, you know, it's, it's so crazy, bro. It's like, I feel like I'm a motivational speaker right now Already, yeah. because I'm sharing my journey yeah. and I'm not coming here to just blow blow smoke yeah, and yeah. tell people hey you can do this you can do that i'm showing you i'm yeah. living, proof. living proof and if i can do it bro i was dealt certain cards and yeah. if i can make the best of what i can do you can do it as well you know just leading you to the to the source let me ask you this right what what motivates you to get up in the morning right is it is it the money is it the relationship is it success what motivates you to be like yo i'm up let's get it you know I respect life yeah. and I feel like my purpose isn't fulfilled. So the moment I realize that I'm conscious that I'm awake, I still have stuff to do. Yeah. God is still saying, hey, listen, you're still on this earth for a purpose. And that's my motivation to fulfill whatever purpose it is that God has blessed me with. You know? Yeah. So it's not the money. Bro. I've created a lot of money. Right. I've lost a lot of money. Right. Money doesn't make me. It's a great tool that's going to basically... Like, it's, 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 the, it's the currency of life. Yeah. Money makes life easier, mm -hmm. hands down. But it's not money. It's success. Success is in every area, you know, abundance. You know, but it's my purpose. My purpose is to help people become the best versions of themselves. And up until that day where my eyes don't open in this world anymore, yeah. then I fulfilled it. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, hey, bro, I like that. Nah, you're a good brother, man. I appreciate you, it, man. You're a good brother. Um, <clears throat> let me, so, throughout your journey, right? Yeah. Coming in from Jamaica, your dad, success, failure, failure, success, all these different things. What have DMARC learned about DMARC? What have you learned about yourself? <laughs> Honestly, most of the, the things that I've learned are like spiritual stuff. You know, Give me an example, like that's like I'm a divinely perfect being. Mm. You know, it's bigger than the this this physical vehicle that I have right here. Right. You know, because I can present myself as this tough guy, this strong guy. I'm handsome, sexy, whatever you name it. But knowing that this is just a vehicle, we're gonna depart from this one day. Right. It's what's beyond this. That's true. You know, this life here is just temporary, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I'm on that journey as well, too, bro. Yeah. It's funny that you said that, man, because I feel like, you know, we're here on this earth to create a purpose. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're here on this earth to do something. Yep. You know what I mean? And I'm figuring, I don't think I have it all figured out mm -hmm. yet, but I feel like, yo, it's coming into fruition. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I'm living right. I'm doing right by people. And sometimes the, the universe, God, Allah, it helps you, too, along mm -hmm. the way. You know what I mean? But you got to be working. You got to be doing something. You got to be a student, bro. Right. You got to be a recipient. Yeah. Because God is, all, God is, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in God, bro. Yeah. Right? And I don't look at God as how everybody look at God or how some people look at God nowadays because I grew up as a Christian child, right? Yeah, yeah. But I stopped looking at God on the outside. I stopped looking for God in the sky to come down and, and save me or whatever. I know that I have access to God right now. Mm -hmm. Right? Whatever I want to speak to God, God's right here. Right. And as long as I'm open enough to hear and be guided, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> guided like by what God's saying, then God's always, listen, we all have a certain path to follow. And you know when you're following your path. Yeah. You know when you're on that path where if you don't make a dollar, 
doing whatever you're doing, you still feel wealthy. Still feel well, yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's our path. You shouldn't be doing something that you don't, like, that you despise doing just to survive. We shouldn't, we shouldn't survive. We should thrive. We should thrive. You know? Yeah. Abundance is our birthright. Wealth is our birthright. And when you realize who you are, that you're bigger than just this persona, DeMarc or James, <laughs> it's game over. It's game over. Yeah. Who do you look up to in business, bro? I look up to a lot of, a lot of people, man. I look up to like Warren Buffett. I look up to, you know, all the billionaires, yeah, you know? Yeah. But what I look up to mostly is somebody that want to better themselves. It, that person doesn't have to be on my level financially right. or, or beyond me, but I look at that person that wants to better themselves. You know, that entrepreneur that's trying. Yeah. The entrepreneur that be like, you know, I want to take a chance on myself. I look up to you. Yeah. I look up to my boys. Yeah. You know, they don't have to financially be on my level, but you know what? I respect what you're doing. Well, you don't. Exactly. You don't have to surpass me financially for me to be like, hey, Bill Gates. Nah, I look up to my brother. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm better off than a lot of people. Yeah. But I look up to a lot of people that, that are around me. I like that. You know? Yo, they got a chain of it's that. It's my man. grandfather, man. Shines with me every day. I like that. Yeah, man. I keep him with me every day, bro. Wow. You got the you got yeah. you got the spirit guys <laughs> with you, bro. I like that, yeah, man. Babe. Um, so as we're wrapping up here, right? Where can people go to learn more about you? To learn more about what you're doing? Absolutely. You know where can people, you know, go to? Right. So you know, I'm on Instagram as Demark underscore Davis, Facebook Demark Davis. I'm launching my coaching program right now. It's called Elite Warriors Way. And you can find it at EliteWarriorsWay.com. Built by Determination as well. You know, the Built by Determination app is everywhere. And listen, man, I'm around. <laughs> get in touch with James and James got, got, got my contact. Yo, I love that, you know? man. All right, let me say this. Let me ask yes. you this. This is, is going to be my final question. Okay. If you had the attention of the world for three minutes, two minutes, yeah. what would DMOC say? You're bigger than your circumstances. Ooh. When you know who you are, you create whatever you want in life. And those would be my only words. When you know who you are. I like that. The main thing is to know who, who you truly are. Yeah. You know, once, once you're there, bro, everything's possible. All possibilities are right here. Just know who you are. Yo, DeMar, we're going to end that right there, brother. Got you. This your main man, Jay. Thank you for tuning in. Live. Love, light, I'll holler. <laughs> Peace and blessings.